All right, welcome. So in this video, I'm just going through two examples that involve equations of lines in three dimensions. So we're coming into this assuming that you've at least seen the equation of a line in three dimensions, so you know where that comes from. And we're just going to do some examples using that form, specifically both the vector and parametric equations for a line. So for our first example, we're just going to find the vector and parametric equations for a line that goes through the point 4, negative 2, 1, and that's in the direction of the vector 1, 1, 2. So you can pause right now if you'd like and try this on your own. Go ahead and do that and come back when you're ready. All right, so we're given a point and a vector in this, and I actually think that's all we're going to need in order to do our equation of a line, so we kind of just need to assemble everything. So if we think about how we write the equation of a line in three dimensions, we use the vector r of t, and that's going to be equal to r sub zero, r naught, plus t times the vector v. So what these things are is t here is the variable, so that is our sort of parameter that is moving, that's our time, and so it's going to help us draw out that line. And then the r0 is going to be our vector that goes to the point we're looking for, and v is the vector that points in the direction we want. So here we actually have everything we need. So our r0 is going to be the vector for negative 2, 1, and that's just a vector I've created that points at the point I was given. So I've just taken that point, 4, negative 2, 1, and made it into a vector. Then I add t, that's my parameter or my variable, and I multiply it by the vector that points in the right direction that I'm looking for. And I was given a direction, so I just put in that vector, 1, 1, 2. In my mind, I kind of visualize this as a vector that points to the point, and then a vector that points in the direction, and by adding them, I'm getting the vector that is from the two combined. So you can think about it geometrically, if you can remember vector addition sort of in your mind geometrically, or if you can go back to the video I have where we talked about that. But otherwise, you're just really looking at this formula and putting in the right information to get us where we're going. So given this formula, this is going to give me the vector equation of my line, but I just want to write it as one vector instead of two. So when I add them together, I do four plus t, that's because I'm doing t times one in the second half there. Then my second component is negative two plus t, again distributing that t to the second vector, and then one plus two t for my last component. And again, this is the vector equation of my line. It has my three components, and t is my parameter that helps me draw out that line since we're moving through time in this three-dimensional space. Then we can write these as parametric equations by just taking the individual components out. So we could say x as a function of time, x of t, is equal to 4 plus t. Then the y value with respect to time is negative 2 plus t. And the z value with respect to time is 1 plus 2t. Also, it's probably not totally required that you think of t as time, but that's just what makes sense to me, is to think of these things drawing out a line in space rather than just sort of existing already. That t value is what's helping us draw the line. Okay, let's move on to the next example. So here, we want to know where does the line through the point 3, negative 2, negative 2, in the direction of the vector 9, negative 1, 6, intersect the xy plane. So here I have a line, but I'm not given the equation of the line, I'm given a point and a direction, like I was in the last problem, and then I'm asked where this line intersects the xy plane. So I'm thinking I'm going to need the equation of the line first in order to tell where it's intersecting, because otherwise I just sort of have this point and this vector and I'm not totally sure what to do with it. So if you want, you could pause right here. Remember, we're going to find the equation of the line and then figure out where it intersects the xy plane. All right, so to get my equation of the line, I'm going to use r as my vector to represent it. Then I take the vector that points at the point, so 3, negative 2, negative 2, and I add it to t times the vector in the right direction. 
9, negative 1, 6. And similar to the last example, I combine this together into one vector. I'm getting 3 plus 9t for my x component, negative 2 minus t for my y component, and negative 2 plus 6t for my z component. And this is my vector equation of the line. Now, when I think about the xy plane, I'm trying to figure out where it's intersecting this line, and so it's going to be helpful to know that the xy plane has a z value of 0, or it's actually z equals 0 as a formula. So when I think of my three parts of this line, if I do the parametric equations, I have x equals 3 plus 9t, y equals negative 2 minus t, and z equals negative 2 plus 6t. And I really want to know what I'm looking at where these intersect, where the z is equal to 0. So where does z as a function of t, which is negative 2 plus 6t, where is this equal 0? So I'm actually just going to take this third component and set it equal to 0 to solve. So I can add the 2 to the other side. I have 6t equals 2, and then I'm going to divide by 6 to get t equals 2 over 6, which is 1 third. So this tells me that the line and the plane intersect at the time, or at t, equals 1 third. So I've only found the time so far, and I'm really wanting to know the actual point where they intersect. So I'm going to need to find the x and y values. I know the z value is 0, but I need to know the x and y values that correspond to this time. So I'm going to plug 1 third into my equations for x and y. So for x, I get 3 plus 9 times 1 third, which is 3 plus 3, which is 6. And then I do the same thing for y. When I put in 1 third, I'm getting negative 2 minus 1 third. By combining some fractions with common denominators, that's negative 6 thirds minus 1 third which is negative 7 thirds. So I have my x, y, and z values, and so I can write this as the line intersects the x, y plane at 6, negative 7 thirds, 0. And that's the point where they intersect. Okay, so that's just two examples of things we can do with equations of lines. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.